Data is the heart of every computer system. We need to make sure the data that we are inputting in our systems is reliable. For that, we have in the Jakarta Enterprise role the Beam Validation Specification. It allows us to use some annotations and create our own annotations to validate data incoming, for example, in a RAS resource. With Quarkus Hibernate Validator, we can use that as an extension to our Quarkus project. Let's take a look to see how it's easy to do that. All right, let's get started adding the Quarkus Hibernate Validator extension to our Quarkus project. I already have a Quarkus project from the other videos that you can find on this channel. So we can use the Maven plugin Quarkus add extension passing as argument the Quarkus Hybrid Validator extension. And we can see here that it was, has been installed. And here I have a people resource. The people resource receives a person and persists on the database. Here the change is pretty small. We just need to add the valid annotation here from the package JavaX validation. It will make sure that every entity that receives here on the save method is valid. But you might be asking, what are the validations that you have to this person entity? This is the next step. Here in the person entity, we have a couple of fields that we need to, to put our annotations to validate the data. Let's get started with the basic validation. We need to make sure some of these fields are not new when persisting to the database. In the database, we have the not new constraints. And if you try to persist a new value, for example, to the email field or first name field, it will throw an error. We don't want to add, right? So we can start by adding here in the email property the not blank from the JavaX validation constraints. The not blank annotation will make sure that this string email is not new, neither blank or empty. So if you have this email uh, and we run the isn't method from the string class, it will throw it will return a false value. We need to add the not blank to the other fields that are strings and uh, required in the database. First name, last name, uh, social security, and that's it. The other fields that are not string and are required on the database, we cannot use the not blank. Not blank is a, a constraint that works only to strings. Two other data types we have, for example, here in the local date, we have the not new annotation from the JavaX validation constraints package. We can use that. Uh, in social security, you see the state, you should the state and status. All right. Now let's add some uh, more specific validations based on the type of the data that you are persisting. The email uh, property here, we need to make sure that the email that we receive here is a well-format email based on the, the, the rules that we have to consider a string as a well-format email. For that, we have the email annotation from the Java X validation constraints pack. Okay, that's it. Here in the dates, we have the birth date and the register date. Okay, the birth date, we need to make sure that we are not registering someone that will be born in the future. We need to make sure that the birth date is a date in the past, considering the past from now, the moment that you are persisting the data. For that, we have a annotation past, again, from the JavaX validation constraints back. The register date is a little bit different. We need to make sure that we are registering uh, this person on the database in the, the same moment or in the future. For that, we have the future or present annotation. 
All right, uh, almost done. Here in the social security, we can use a rejects pattern to make sure that the social security fits with the criteria to a social security number. For that, we have the pattern annotation with a regex pattern. All right, um, we are good to test. We can go ahead on my terminal. And here I have a folder test JSONs with uh, a few JSON files that are already prepared for this demo demonstration. I can use a curl here. And here I use, first of all, the valid person file. The idea is to test that the endpoint that we have is working as we want to. Uh, okay, let's send this request. And we can see that we have here the response with a object with a ID, which means that it was successfully persisted on the database. Uh, for example, here we have the email michael23 at jordan.com, the first name of Michael and the last name Jordan. Uh, the middle name is Jeffrey, uh, the dates and the security, the social security number. Okay, and uh, the birth date here. Uh, we can take a look in the database to check that person exists. And yes, we have here Michael Jeffrey Jordan. All right. Now let's test with a invalid email person to see the, the validation working. I will change here my JSON file to invalid email person.json and we can see here in the response a message, a body with a message must be a well-formed email address. So the, the email that we are sending and we can see the body of, that we are sending here, Kobe Dean Bryant with a, this is a valid email in the email field. So our validation to email is working as we want. Let's try again with a uh, future date for the birth uh, date. We can try again, curl. Let me grab here the name of the file, invalid the birthday JSON file. And we can see that the uh, must be a past date. Let's take a look what is the content of the file that I am sending. We have here LeBron James with a birthday in 2022. So it's a future date. Our validation requires that the birthday is in the past. So everything is working. Let's take a, a last look in the, the, the last validation, the pattern for the social security number. Uh, let me take a look what is the, the file name they have here. And we can see that the, uh, the file that the content that you are sending on this file must match with this beautiful regex pattern. And the value that we are sending, it doesn't match with that. Those validations are pretty simple. They are out of the box. They are already ready on the Java Beam validation specification. Uh, that's fine. But in daily basis, we have uh, more complex validations. For example, social security number uh, has a validation with the state that the number was registered, was issued. So here, we need to make sure that the object that we are sending with the value in the social security number matches with the state of United States of America that the social security number was uh, registered. 
For that, we can create a custom validation using the bin validation API uh, that the, the specification provides us. Okay? For that, let's get started by creating a annotation called social security. I already have it uh, almost right here. I just need to add a few um, lines of code here. The first thing that we need to add here a, is a annotation saying that this interface, this annotation will be a constraint validated by social security validator that is a new class that we are creating on the mod script package right now. Uh, and here in the class, we need to pass a generic parameter here saying that social security is the annotation that we have and person is the entity that we need to validate. And it will require us to implement a method called isValid. It's a pretty straightforward method. It returns a boolean. If you return false, the validation will throw an error. If return true, it will pass the validation, meaning that data is a valid one considering our rule. What is the content that we have here? Uh, let's take a look in the code that I just uh, copy pasted here. First of all, let's um, import the class. We are doing two things on this map. The first thing that we are doing here on this method is to add in two variables to the context of our validator. We have here the social security and the issued state values. Later on, we will understand better what this means. In the return line, we have here the value I should state check prefix on range. This method is already done. I, I, I built that before. It's basically a method that checks if the three first numbers of the social security number matches with the state of, uh, we are saying that is the register, the ancient state, okay? So here we are getting the first three uh, letters or numbers of the social security string uh, parsing it to a int value and checking it on the range. As you might know, every United States state has uh, one or more sequences that means that state is, uh, that social security number is for that state. Uh, the method is, is simple. It returns a true if the number matches with the state and false if the number doesn't match with the state. We are almost done with our validator. We just need to do a small change on the social security uh, annotation to make sure that we have a human readable message to uh, the user when we throw an error saying that social security number is invalid one. For that, we need to add uh, Three lines here. Uh, let me import the payload from Java validation payload class. And here is the message that the user will see. Social security here and issued state here are placeholders. So by using that variable that we just added to the context, the bin validation specification will replace this value uh, when sending the message as a response to the user with the value of the data that we are trying to persist. We will see it in action. And the message is, the given social security number is a valid social security number for the given state. Okay, the last step is to say on the person class that we want to use the social security annotation. Here we are saying that every time that we try to persist a person, we want to run that validation. Uh, we need to put it in the class level because the validation is a composition of two values, the social security number and the issued state. We need to validate a match 
between those fields. If you just need to validate a single field, you can use a, a custom validator in the field, uh, for example, social security here. It's not our case, but would work in a different scenario. All right, let's test that to see how it will go. I have here uh, a invalid prefix social security number person.json. And I have a curl line here that I will send invalid prefix social security number person. And let's see what will happen. All right, we have an error here. The object that we are sending is first name Irvin, last name Johnson Jr., uh, better known as Magic Johnson. And the social security number that we are sending starts with 018 in the state of Virginia. But the message says the social security number that we are sending is an invalid social security number for Virginia. So our message is working, our validation is working. The BIM validation specification is pretty straightforward, it's simple and we need to pay attention when using that because it handles the validations that we have in our data, the key part of our system. And that's it for today. If this is the first time that you are hearing about Quarikos, take a look on our channel. We have a lot of content talking about Quarikos, its environment, and other tech stuff. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment that you might have. Thank you for watching it. Bye.